Give me a thumbs up when it's at a good volume. Check one, two, check one, two, check one, two, check one, two, check one, two. Okay, we got thumbs up in the back. Cool. Hello, thank you all for coming. So, I work at Moog, and we want to have a union. Um, thank you all for sticking around after a long day's work, and thank you to the community members for coming out in support of this campaign. Um, in the past, the struggle of the working class was finding a job in the first place, but more recently, the challenge has shifted to being able to find work that's suitable, sustainable, and supportive. There's a quote from labor movement history, uh, ask for work. If they don't give you work, ask for bread. But in Asheville in 2022, we've got work and are still having to ask for bread because our wages are not sustainable. In the past, and possibly at the job that you have right now, you might have heard a boss or a coworker lecture you about how we should be glad to even have a job in the first place, and that we shouldn't complain about how we're being treated or what the condition of our wages are. Um, even when the bosses act nice and polite, all we have to do is look around carefully to see that what they really care about is their salaries and their personal profits. And that's not justifiable because we work hard. This organizing campaign isn't interested in disrupting production. We build high quality products as the premier synthesizer brand in the world. We design software, we build hardware, we make decisions about quality standards, and we make so many amazing things in the factory. And what does the boss make besides money? The workers do all the work, so what if we got organized? We deserve a place at the table with the executives and their banker friends. Workers with problems like unlivable wages, denial of time for ample breaks, an unsafe or unhealthy workplace during an ongoing pandemic, discrimination or sexual harassment are often, or people who have these complaints are often afraid that there's nothing we can do to push back against these abuses. Those who try to push back on their job are often subjected to harassment, discipline without cause, or firing, and we've already seen this. Yes. If you have a problem, you might be afraid to complain, but this is why labor unions were first formed. Problems which seem insurmountable for one worker alone are often easier to correct when we act as part of a group of employees. When you have the solidarity of a group supporting you, you have more resources to draw upon to help make things right, because there's power in a union. A lot of us are unhappy with how the company has been doing lately, and it's cathartic to commiserate with coworkers about our conditions, but it does little besides provide temporary relief for our mood. The executives have been asking for second chances in the form of, oh, just wait until later this year or even next year, and then we'll start making more money again. And they've offered false concessions in the form of various meetings and committees that have wasted time and postponed material results. But again, the catharsis of quote-unquote being heard isn't enough, not without a contract that locks in our rights as workers. Yeah. We've seen how these committees will duck the issue and redirect the conversation as soon as we ask for anything in writing. And what a union has to offer us is an avenue to guarantee meaningful, good faith bargaining for contract proposals that are built upon everyone's input to meet our needs. Everyone's input in that process is integral, and right now we have a handful of people that are going to continue to speak to our experiences as employees at Moog. Thank you. One more time for Nathan. Yeah. All right, uh, I'll introduce myself. My name is Aubrey Young. I am a team lead for Two Lines at Moog Music Incorporated. Um, Pretty much, we're here showing support. And I look upon everyone and I feel nothing but strength and hope. And those are two things that I haven't been able to feel at my job in quite some time. Um, my fellow coworkers, people from DSA, people from IBEW, thank you so much for your support and being able to just lift us up in a time that has been absolutely dismal. We've watched so many of our fellow workers just be let go without a justification besides we need it for the company to continue on but so much of the hope that I try to find is you know 
my experiences with everyone that I work with. And I just rest assured that I know that I'll get a smile from one of them, even though we completely are just swimming in it day in, day out. And uh, I hope that we can continue our momentum from this meeting and get as many signatures as we can today. Because for this place to continue putting out those premium synthesizers and making a huge impact, we're going to need that because every day we're losing footing. There's a lot of power here. And, you know, I just thank you all for being here and showing support. And I can't say that enough. And, uh, you know, there's strength in the union and we will persist fighting all the way. Thank you guys. Thanks very much all right. so, Yeah, so my position, um, yeah, team lead for mine seven and eight. I've produced thousands of instruments in the last two years and um, haven't necessarily got the compensation I think I deserve and the rest of the people. And so much of that isn't even a dollar sign. It's the time that's put into this place making it what it is. And the consideration that goes into that is fairly dim and, you know, no one really considers us equals. And we're trying to blur those lines of delineation. And uh, with your help, I think we can do that. Cheers. Who's up next? Hey, Nathan, you want to introduce it? <laughs> is there anybody from the IBW that wants to speak? Do you have somebody who could tell a personal story? People relate, people relate to that. Hey, uh, how's everybody doing? Woo! Yeah. 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 This is great. I love seeing you know, all this. Uh, I'm making flash. I'm like, uh, sorry. My name is Christopher McGlashan. Uh, yeah. Uh, or oh, an IBW Local 238 here in Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, been a union member for 22 years. I'm an inside journal wireman. Yes. I'm also an instructor at our apprenticeship. I run our apprenticeship. Oh, um, and this is great. See the solidarity. See everybody here. Um, being a union member, it, it means, uh, good. Uh, you know, having a contract, having a voice, having a, a right to negotiate what you want. You know, and that's what this is all about. Uh, the IBW Local 238 right now, we have 240 members. And I can guarantee you, every one of them are right here with you guys. They're behind you, all of you. You know, we want to we wanna see this uh, campaign be successful. We want y'all to have, you know, a voice at the table. We want y'all to have a contract and have the what y'all need. So, that's all I got to say. Thank you. Thank you. say anything but I'm just gonna shoot from the hip. Um, Louder. I, uh, I work in uh, technical support. My title is technical support assistant. I've uh, been with Moog for nine years. Uh, thank you. Uh, I still uh, make less than a living wage. Yeah. Um, we got people here that build thousands of cents. If you call this place, if you email this place, Chances are you're talking to me or one of a few other people. We're doing technical support. We're helping you repair your synth. We're saving you money from having to send the synth to us. We're selling you parts. We're helping you integrate it into Ableton or Logic or your setup at home in your studio. We're doing all of this um, five days a week and still not many of us making a living wage, especially after all this time. So. Just wanted to give that little bit of context from my own personal experience, and um, you know, I think this is a good start. I think let's just keep the conversation and the momentum going. Um, and uh, I'm really happy to see uh, this happening finally. 
long overdue, and thank you so much for showing up. How's it going, y'all? What's up? My name's Jack. I'm a production validator. I effectively make sure the instrument works the way it's supposed to. I make sure all the jacks function correctly, all the knobs function correctly, all that good shit. And um, I, I just wanted to talk about my experience here at Moog. I've been here for two years. Uh, I actually started on the same day as Aubrey, who spoke earlier. Um, there are a couple of us who started that day and left. Was one of them. And so I usually work on the Matriarch instrument. And it's it probably, since we're out of the Can you directly? So, we, we built an instrument called Matriarch, if y'all aren't aware. It sells currently for $2,200 new. That is equivalent to my monthly take-home pay, if not more. I am expected to work for 11 of those instruments a day. So, I mean, that, all of that labor does, it, it's split between eight people effectively. 22 instruments for eight people. Each of those is sold for 2200 and it's it's embarrassing that I can, I can sit. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. It's embarrassing to sit for effectively nine hours a day working through instruments that I could not pay for. Yeah. I, I could not pay for those instruments at all if I did not work here and had an employee purchase plan. Like, and that isn't that even any good? Yeah. yeah because yeah. even, that, that even is just not. Yeah, that's being taken, <laughs> modified. <laughs> subtracted from and yeah it's it's really sad to see and I'm very happy to be a part of this unionization drive I'm very happy to see it happen um, if any Moog employees have any questions for me or anyone else who spoke who spoke today please don't hesitate to reach out and I'll hand this off to someone else now but thank you thank, thank everyone for being here <laughs> I wanted to speak for a second about um, the marketing that's on the packaging with all of our instruments. Oh, yeah. um, every single package contains a label talking about uh, it's built in Asheville, North Carolina um, at Moog Music, which is an employee-owned company. Um, and that's not entirely true. It's an employee stock ownership program um, where the workers have 49% of the stock ownership and he rocks back and forth. So you have to CEO Mike Adams has 51%. Um, so, yeah, technically employee owned, but in effect, we have no way to affect our daily living, like working conditions. Um, and we need to be able to have that power over it. Especially if they're going to invoke being a North Carolina company. And I'm reminded of the state motto, which is to be rather than to seem. And it just strikes me as hypocritical uh, that they're going to seem like they're an employee-owned company when we don't have any of the worker power at our workplace. So if anybody has bought a Moog instrument and has seen that marketing on our packaging, just know that you are being misled, you are being lied to by the company Hey y'all, I'm uh, I'm Michaela. I used to work here at Moog until the most recent round of layoffs, which if you've seen the uh, the post on Mountain Express, our press release, a disproportionate number of those who were laid off were either trans or people of color. Now they probably, they probably just looked at names on a spreadsheet and numbers on a spreadsheet and tried to apply, equate our human value into numbers. But it still means that they really, really fucked up. <laughs> um, yeah, I used to work here and loved it. The people here are amazing. The people who work here, the people who make the instruments you buy, they are lovely people. They're some of the greatest people I've met. Um, and it honestly has helped me like turn myself around in like, terms of like, hey, these are, these are cool people to model myself after. This is a cool ethos to find myself in. But then, 
but then you have the company of Moog, whom like to express an open door policy. You know how the CEOs do. And I did. I went and talked to Joe Richardson several times. I uh, had a few conversations with him and with the uh, people in HR, just asking questions, helping organize a compensation committee within the company that the executives wanted to set up to. Who knows? Um, and in the end, we don't know why anyone was fired, because we weren't given a justification. We have no transparency into the company. We're told there's nothing else that could be done. But without a contract, we can't verify that. We don't know how they made these decisions, and they could have made these decisions justly, but I'll leave that to y'all to figure out, because... What happened to Siobhan? Why? Siobhan was Why? an employee of, what was it, 18 years? Yep. 18 years, who in the layoff before the most recent round of layoffs, was let go because her position on a piece of paper was deemed not necessary. Even though she poured her soul into this company, Bob Moog hired her. And, and she hired all of us. All of us. She, was she let go. hired all of us. <laughs> and she was let go without any warning. No one knew what would happen and didn't even get to say goodbye to anyone that day. And us as workers, we walked out that day. We stood together next to those stairs. The reason we didn't see any immediate repercussions from that is because we stood there in solidarity with each other. Right. That shows the power of labor, that they can't do this without us. And if we are all together, if they don't leave us divided, then they have to listen to us. Is there anybody else who wanted to speak in support of the campaign? Yo. <laughs> What's up, Sunshine? Yo. What's up, everybody? My name is Brady. Um, I haven't worked at Moog for just a little bit. Uh, I think I quit like, what, three months ago, around there? <laughs> about that. But I was here for about a year and a half, uh, just on the assembly floor, but it was very clear to me after a short amount of time um, just how almost disposable I was seen by the people up top. Whereas around me on the line that I worked on, I worked on a couple different lines and met wonderful people. I felt welcomed, I felt accepted, I felt what the spirit of Moog should have been. It says in our tenets, it's love and respect all humans, that's right, love and respect all humans. To love and respect somebody is to give them enough money for them to afford food. That's respect to me. I have a saying, it, I say it a lot, I put it on everything. It says, fight for your sunshine. Everybody that I work with kind of knows the significance of that. Your sunshine is your job. Your sunshine is your day-to-day -day life. We, we spend, we spend <laughs> nine hours of our day here, every day. That is our time, that's our life. We deserve to have the right just good conditions in those places. And we deserve to have enough money to get home and feed our families. Yeah. It makes me really, really proud to see just all of these people, because this was something that I was really hoping would happen. And God, it just, it's giving me chills. It really is, because I'm proud of you all, seriously. I'm proud of everybody here. We need to fight for our sunshine wherever we are. And right here, right now, Moog needs to fight for its sunshine. Everybody in this crowd, everybody that works here, everybody that has worked here needs to stand up and show all of them what we need. Not what we want, what we need. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. That's all.
Is there anybody else that wanted to speak in support? I got you. Hello, how is everyone? Yeah. My name's Joey Moore. I'm the president of Local 238. Standing around looking, I just get the sense of power. There's something that's happening here right now. Looking around, we're all equals. When are we going to get start getting treated like we're equals? No matter how this goes down, I just want everyone here to know at Local 238, the doors are always open for y'all. I, I believe everyone should have representation, get paid a living wage, and be able to succeed a lot. And if there's anything at all we can help you with, please let us know. Let Chris know. Let me know. Let anyone, any local, any organization, IBEW know. We're here to stand behind you and support you 100%. Thank you. Thank you to Joey and Chris for helping us get this project off the ground. Um, if this is a thing that you are interested in, either workers or community members, um, or if this is a thing that you want to know more about, uh, this Saturday, June 4th at 4 p.m., the IBEW office is helping us host an informational barbecue. Uh, at Moog, the workers in production, warehouse, shipping, service quality, and service, comma, quality, and engineering are invited, as well as all of y'all's friends and family. Um, we can talk more there about the details of this procedure, what uh, joining a union looks like, and what it means for us in the long term. Uh, this is something that I really want to see through to completion. I have every intention of following through with everything that I can do for it. Um, anybody that is watching at home, uh, just continue to support the campaign on social media, um, at Moog Music Union on Twitter and Instagram is how we are, uh, I guess, putting out updates about this campaign. Um, and that is all I've got. Thank you again so much. And I want to speak specifically to the Moog employees in the crowd. I mean, I don't know how much I was supposed to even say before, but I don't know what you're supposed to say now. But you all know what it is in there, what it's like. And you know the promise. <laughs> the speech is on fire. <laughs> Anyways, that there are promises being made to the employees here, but those promises mean nothing without a contract. They are words in the wind. Joe told me there wouldn't be any more layoffs, and I was laid off, so I don't trust him. <laughs> uh, this is just a logistical note. If you are not eligible to be in the bargaining unit but want to show support at the barbecue and don't have the power to fire anybody, uh, you're invited. <laughs> but yeah, please come in good faith. It, like, come if you want to show solidarity. Yeah. And, come, and come if you want more information. Several of the organizers and union members will all be there and be able to answer specific questions about the process and how this will work going forward. Because there's a whole legal process, including like a bunch of boards and stuff. But for here, for here today is a celebration. Woo Come on, you guys, you could do better than that. We need a union. We need a union. Now we're equal. I agree. This is... We support it. Yeah. Synthesize union. 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 Video or yeah, I just want to ask you how. I don't know if I want to be in Okay, how about Michaela? Sure.
or whoever is the spokesperson. I want to find out how this got started, how you got involved with the IBW. Oh, um, um, yeah, that would be you know, if DSA, like how Kayla. DSA is helping you. That would be good Were you inspired by the Amazon you, you know, like interview? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we, if you're just joining us, we are here at uh, Moog Music at their factory where they produce the world renowned synthesizers right here in Asheville, North Carolina. And you just heard from some workers who are trying to start a union here and they want to affiliate with IBEW, which is the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers. I'm going to interview right now, what is your name? Corey Chris. Corey Chris about some of the logistics of how this got started. How long has this union movement been in the works, and whose idea was it? Was it the workers themselves, or did IBEW come in to try to organize it? Um, so there have been like whispers of the union happening for like years since before I even got here. Um, but but when when I got here, like like there just hadn't been anything to come of it. Um, and uh, I, I got here, and I just. I knew there was things going wrong, so I just decided that I should contact someone. And they started talking to each other, and we just like, got in touch with the union organizers. And he started giving us a lot of uh, information. We started meeting in person. We started going to like, um, we, started, we went out to the union office, um, and we started putting all this together. Okay, how did you decide to pick the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers? Is that just because you make an electrical instrument and it makes sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah pretty much. It, it, it makes sense, actually. Ah, uh, so, yeah, it makes sense. Um, yeah, just, you know, just like, you know, all the, all the circuitry, all the, like, like the metal work and the woodwork, it just seemed like the right thing. Okay, now, since you've been talking about this, has there been any pushback from management? Usually, as I've been covering the Amazon Workers Union, the Starbucks Workers Union, they send in management to talk about why it would be a bad idea, they have captive audience meetings, you know, has, what's been the reaction of the management? Um, there's, there's been a lot of stuff. Um, uh, I mean, when when we went public today, they uh, they pulled everyone together and, and had a, a, a meeting essentially where they were just saying why it wouldn't work, why um, like like the ways that would actually like crash the company essentially. Um, uh, saying that it would like take money away from us, um, yeah, stuff like that. What has been the role? I see a lot of Asheville DSA shirts around here. What has been the role of Asheville DSA in your process? Um, I, um, I personally haven't been in contact uh, with DSA very much. Um, 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 all of us in the DSA have got kind of different roles. Um, like, um, so, like, like each of us have kind of different contacts. Okay. And um, what is the next step? Are you going to have a vote? And is there a, dead, a date set for that vote? Um, there's not a date set. Um, at the moment, we're trying to get um, the, the authorization card signed. Um, once we have about 70% um, of, the, um, of the bargaining unit uh, to sign our authorization cards, um, we'll, then we'll um, send that to the board, and then we'll tell them we want a union, and they'll ask the company yeah. if they want to give us the union. And when they inevitably say no, um, they'll, they'll end up going to the board. Now this man, Bob Rowe, who started uh, obviously did a good thing at one point by selling the company to 49 percent of the company to the workers, but that still leaves the other 51 percent in whose control? Is it in his family control or is it the shareholders? Or who is the other 51 percent? So the, the important ownership um, initially was Bob's idea, um, but he didn't ever implement it. Um, it was implemented in the last way. Um, it was implemented by the, the current owner uh, slash CEO, who is Mike Adams, um, and he currently owns 51% of the company, and 49% goes to the workers. Oh, okay, so it's a privately held company. Yeah. Okay, and um, let me ask you, because I know you're only speaking for yourself, but were you inspired, as so many of the Starbucks workers were inspired, by Bernie Sanders and his campaign? can say I wasn't. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's it's been it was pretty sad when Bernie didn't win, but that's that's completely irrelevant. Um, we're, this is not like a party line kind of thing. We're we're, we're here for we're here for each other. We're we're, we're, we're here to make work 
Carolina at Reddish Day for working. We're trying to make things better for ourselves and each other. And I also see you have Raise Up here. Raise Up North Carolina. They are also, I guess they're affiliated with the SCI group. This is a very low state as far as utilization, one of the worst in the country. So a lot of these efforts are really positive developments. I yeah, I think so too. I'm really excited about it. I'm looking forward to what comes of it. I think everything that's happening with Starbucks and Amazon is really exciting. I, I, I can't wait to see what happens with all this. Yeah, I hope Starbucks Charlotte Street has a little bit of Okay, thank you, Corey. Thank you. Thank all right. You. Okay. All right, everyone. So I'm going to close up the uh, live stream right here now. Uh, this is the Lauren Steiner from the Robust Opposition reporting from the New Music Factory in Asheville, North Carolina, where workers have banded together to form a union uh, with the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers. They are trying to get authorization cards signed right now. There's another event coming up on Saturday. I will put more information in the comments, but as you heard from the last speaker, Bernie Sanders may not have won his election as president, but his movement lives on. Thank you very much, and share the stream, and you can press end right now. I can't see that. Yeah, the batteries. Oh, it died. Yeah. Oh, no, it just, it just, it was like right after you stopped. Are you kidding? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, literally. That's like right perfect. At, yeah, literally right after you stopped type, uh, talking, it was like, I just saw it go dark. Well, I hope it's still on here. I should.